Viewers, welcome to our premier business show, The Entrepreneurship Couch. Today, with us, we're talking to our guest, Mr. Stephen Magolisi. Mr. Stephen Magolisi is one of the renowned, well-known entrepreneurs and business people in the world. Mr. Stephen Magolisi, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you, and uh, welcome, viewers. Mr. Magolis, you are one of the few well-known business people in the world. We would want you to share with our viewers how did your journey start? What informed you to get into business? Thank you. Well, I'm a rural boy, born in Morewa in Zimbabwe. Went to a rural school, came into the city uh, to look for employment like every boy of my age at that time. Uh, everybody came to find their fortune in the city. So I came into the city and started from the ground. Worked my way up, I got a few jobs here and there. I worked only for 10 years. At the age of 29, I decided to go into business. I just said to myself, I will not continue working, I will work for myself. I quit a job that was paying me three times and started paying myself a third. Uh, just to pay my rent and buy my groceries and struggled for the first year or two uh, to start earning a decent income but that was the beginning and uh, since then I've not looked back I've been growing virtually uh, all the way to where I am now so I'm 39 years in business so 1981 on the 13th of February I registered my first company now I have a group of companies so I started with trading, just trading, bringing goods and selling. Then went into bulk supplies, particularly to the government of Zimbabwe, uh, bringing goods from outside and from within Zimbabwe, buying and supplying. And then ventured into uh, real estate at a much earlier stage, uh, way back in 1984. Uh, I'd already started buying blocks of flats and searching and them, uh, and uh, buying more. And, in subdividing into sections and selling them. And uh, then I uh, went into medical supplies uh, in the 90s, uh, producing maternity sanitary towels uh, for new mothers. Many people may not know this, but these are used in maternity hospitals only, and, and all mothers that have left maternity hospital. And uh, then I expanded in medicals to supply uh, a lot of uh, disposables and vaccines. I used to represent one of the biggest uh, vaccine producer in the world, uh, an Indian company. And uh, so as things uh, change, I also change with the times to see what can take me forward instead of holding on to sentimental values. I don't have sentimental values in business. Whatever is going down, I leave it and I go for what is going forward. So I saw that uh, the medical world uh, in this country was not going to last with the good values in terms of bulk buying. So I moved into land development, uh, starting off with an industrial park known as Magolis Industrial Park in Aspindale. And that was the turning point for my land uh, development. And of course, uh, 10 years ago, uh, slightly more than 10 years ago, I bought 300 acres of land in Harare South when no one thought that Harare South is an area to go. I turned this place into a paradise. So I carved out 70 acres of that land. Uh, there's a river, River Nyarongo, and there's uh, two dams I've created one I found one day. And I turned that 70 acres into uh, a resort, which is the Stephen Magolis Resort. And, uh, Maybe I can give you more details later, but uh, I don't want to keep talking too much. But I've also divided the remainder of the 300 acres into industrial land. And uh, it's another industrial park. Many companies have bought from me uh, and are going to build big factories. Some have already built. So for now, I'll stop there. Interesting background you have given us there, Mr. Magolis. And now you're saying you had to leave a lucrative, well-paying job for you to get into running your own business. Yes, yes. Looking back, would you regret that decision? Not, not at all. Not at all. Mm. I, I think when you are in a lucrative business, uh, in a lucrative job, mm. the chances are you are too comfortable uh, and you don't see further. Uh, but I knew promotions don't come fast. Mm. So I didn't want to wait for a promotion. I promoted myself. Yes, <laughs> so I am where I am. Thank you, viewers. We'll take a short break. We'll be back soon.
viewers, welcome back to our second segment of our premier business show, The Entrepreneurship Couch. Today we are still with uh, Mr. Stephen Magolis. Mr. Stephen Magolis, welcome back to the show. Thank you, sir. Now, Mr. Stephen Magolis, in the earlier segment, you talked about how you started in business, how far you have gone so far, how far you have fed. Now, I would want to know, why did you choose these particular sectors when you got into business? Oh, thanks. I think in the beginning, uh, I was uh, uh, trying to earn money. All right. So, yes, uh, I went into business uh, with a pure intention to earn more money than I was earning as, a, as an employee. Uh, and of course I knew as an employee, uh, you know, sometimes you don't grow fast because you wait for the promotion. Uh, or you may change your job, but you're not going very far in a, in a, in a speedy way. And so uh, after 10 years of working for a few other companies, going on my own was the uh, choice uh, that I made and told myself I can work hard. I have made money and uh, said to myself, I'm making money, I must reinvest the money. So that's what I've done. So hence I told you I was buying blocks of flats and selling. And so right, like right now we are sitting in a building called Macaulay's House, which is my multi-story building uh, with over 40 tenants and uh, ground floor shops and three floors of uh, uh, office space. Uh, I bought this building. It was a run-down block of flats in 1986. So that's how I've been investing and I've turned it into what it is a modern, one of the cleanest buildings in Harare, sure. modern uh, shopping mall and office mall uh, in the CBD, uh, Central Business District of Harare. Mm -hmm. So that's how I invested and I've built a lot of buildings in the, in the city. Some I've sold, uh, some I've rented out. Uh, but uh, I went into uh, buying and developing land a little later in 2006 and since then I'm buying and developing land so the, 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 the uh, position I'm in now is that of owning land more than any other asset mm. And, mm. And, and buildings and for me that's the final thing those that know about investment mm -hmm. uh, you need to end up in real estate because that is that's investment uh, so I'm quite strong in real estate. Uh, as we speak right now, I have a very strong portfolio of industrial stands, housing stands, and houses that are totally built and ready to move in tomorrow if you buy one from me. So I'm selling all this in different areas of Harare, uh, waterfalls, Mandara, Borodeo, Karikri. So yeah, that's where I am. Interesting uh, uh, development there. Uh, you have taught us how you tend to get into investments and how what informs your decision. Now, Mr. Magolis, you are one of the few renowned, well-known business uh, entrepreneurs and business people. If you are to talk to today's youth, young entrepreneurs, forgive me for this, but for me, you belong to the what I would term the old school entrepreneurs. Over the years, you have made mistakes. Over the years, you've acquired skills and talents. What would you tell a young, upcoming entrepreneur? Okay, yeah. uh, very correct. Uh, not only young, um, upcoming entrepreneur, but even those that are old. I think discipline is very important. In business, there's a variety of disciplines. You need to be the marketing person. So you are the marketing person. You are the sales person. You are the financial person. It doesn't matter if you're a financial director. Mm. But how that money is invested is your decision. It's your business. Because you can tell the director, it's my money. I do what I want with it. And you go and buy a jet instead of, uh, and you pack the jet and it's costing you money. Mm. Instead of putting it like I've done in real estate. Mm. Because real estate is real. You know what I mean? And that's why it's called real estate. It's real. Yeah. Other things, they, they you know go out. And I always say to people, the only thing you cannot import in this world is real estate. Mm. And that's why land people fight wars over territories. Mm. You know, most wars are over land. The piece yeah. of land is where people fight. Mm. So if a, it could be a little island, like you know, the Falkland Islands, mm. there was a huge war over something that might not be productive, hasn't yeah. got gold or diamonds. Or, but you know, that is land. That's the value of land. And people who own land are called landlords. Mm. Uh, so uh, it is really a question of um, uh, 
uh, where do you invest? So whether you are young or old and you are starting business, you have to invest correctly. So you, like I said, you have financial discipline. Mm -hmm. So that's, you make your money, you must look after that money and invest the money correctly because you can invest the money wrongly uh, and sooner or later you are broke and you are upset and you think business is not the world to be in and it's, it's a difficult thing because it's you and not anyone else. It's unlike when you are sitting in a, in a big company where you have a, a board above you mm -hmm. and you are a chief executive. The board will tell you where to put the money. Sure. So you may have the powers but there's other powers above you. But in your own business you are the, the, the final deci decision maker. Mm -hmm. So your decision uh, carries your business. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there's also the, 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 the uh, element of uh, public relations. You must be able to communicate with people, uh, not only your customers, but many other people around you. Viewers across the globe, welcome back to our third and final segment of Entrepreneurship Couch, our premier business show where we're talking to Mr. Stephen Magolis, one of the well-known world business uh, leaders. Mr. Magolis, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Magolis, we had been talking about how you've been running your business. Now, we would want you to share with our audience in terms of decision-making. You are surrounded with a lot of subordinates. How do you go about making your decisions on a day-to-day -day basis? So, first thing is, uh, you know, decisions uh, are made by me. Uh, on information given to me. Of course, I will always uh, ask my staff, this is the direction we want to take and so on, but uh, even if I get that information, and it may not be uh, the information, uh, it may not be the, 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 the right direction to take, uh, sorry, or it may be the right direction to take in their minds, mm -hmm. but if I see it otherwise, I take my decision. Mm -hmm. So I'm totally responsible for my decisions, mm -hmm. uh, but taking information from my staff, uh, I use a lot of people in property development. It's just not my staff, not my full-time staff. I have engineers, I have architects, I have uh, you know many other people. But still, uh, I say to them, guys, this is the way I would like this building to look like. Uh, let's go it that way. Even though the architect has designed otherwise, so you have to do it your way so that you are satisfied. Uh, you don't blame anybody for your decision. So that's what I do. Thank you very much for that. Mr. Magolis, this particular show would not be adequate if we're not going to talk about the Stephen Magolis uh, Conference and Resort. Yes. It's a renowned uh, world-class resort. A lot of people from the region internationally have visited the conference. What informed you to come up with that particular conference and what are your future plans? Thank you very much. You know, it's interesting, uh, in entrepreneurship, you see an opportunity and you seize it. So what happened is when I bought that land, uh, there was nothing. It was, there were squatters and it was a real open piece of land. Uh, there had been some company, the company I bought from, uh, used to mine sand, making tiles and so uh, it looked very uh, poor. In the land, uh, you know, the 300 acres, in the middle, a river cuts through, and it's a river in Yarongo, it cuts through a small river. And uh, it's got trees, beautiful trees. And it's got balancing rocks with Bushman paintings from maybe 600 years ago. And I said to myself, this place is a resort place. So uh, it was meant to be industrial uh, land, but when I approached the authorities, the, you know, city of Arare, said I want to turn this into a resort. They said, fine, go ahead. So I turned it into a resort piece of land. So I carved out 70 acres, uh, which I turned into a beautiful garden, cleaned up the dams and the river. It's like just a paradise. So there's life there, fish, I put in a lot of fish. Bird life is there, we keep certain trees, which we know in certain plants that attract birds. Uh, it's, it's got uh, over 61 indigenous trees, species, yeah, mm -hmm. tree species in there. Mm -hmm. With uh, We have carved um, uh, the, 
big five of Africa into uh, some of the balancing rocks, uh, including other animals. It's just the big five plus more. So it is, uh, as you say, one of the best. Uh, people can visit our website and uh, our Facebook and look at this. It's phenomenal. Thanks very so much, Mr. Magois. Now, as El, your last parting words to the viewers across the world, yeah. would you briefly just talk to other business people and entrepreneurs? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, in business, you're bound to go down, you're bound to go up, but you must say to yourself, how many times have I gone down? And how many times have I gone up? So in percentage terms, if you go down 20% and you go up 80%, you are moving forward. I always say in an examination, we all aim to be 100% successful, you know, pass with 100% AAA. Mm. But even that, you may find yourself um, uh, getting an 80% uh, instead of 100, but you have passed. Mm. And you don't fail uh, to go to the next level of uh, uh, education. So if you're in Form 3, you're now going to Form 4. Mm. So that's how it should be in business. You cannot be 100% successful, but be in the 80s and, you know, keep pushing. Uh, right now, uh, as a result, uh, we have plans to uh, put up uh, the casino buildings ready. We want to start a casino, uh, which could be soon. Uh, we want to put up an amusement park uh, with water features and what, what, what. We want to increase our rooms uh, so that we cater for bigger uh, conferences. And we also set aside a piece of land for the convention. In Zimbabwe may grow into a nice convention center like Singapore sure, sure. and then we can uh, uh, have a convention center once we have adequate accommodation and uh, you know, I think there will be demand for something like that. Yes. Thank you very much for your time Mr. Magoris, uh, insightful, very insightful for, um, experience that you have shared with us then. Uh, we hope to have you again on the show soon. Viewers, thank you very much for the time that we have had on this show. We have been having Mr. Stephen Magonis, one of the well-known, renowned business people. Again, thank you very much for this show. May you always continue to subscribe and look forward to our next business premiere show. Thank you very much. <laughs>